welcome to another video. I'll be demonstrating the method I used to paint these Frostgrave soldiers from the game of the same name. To start with, I assembled the model as usual, cleaned it up, and got it stuck to an old Malifaux base I had lying around. Well, collection of Malifaux bases. And I also build up, uh, filled out the base with that Vallejo sandy paste you just saw. The texture it lays down can look like dirt or snow or any other sort of, sort of ground cover, and since it's pretty messy to work with, I prefer to get it down early than do all my painting over it in order to, well, minimize the risk of um, splashing onto the miniature later on. The colors I'll be using, are, for the flesh tones at least, which is what I'll be starting with, consist of the Reaper Paints um, flesh tones triads. Um, I do believe they are uh, tanned skin, dark skin, and golden skin. I was initially going to use rosy skin as well, but it didn't look appropriate on the models um, after the first application. So here we go. Now I'll begin getting the base coat down as usual. Um, this will take two to three layers as well. Most um, colours over black um, need to take, and I do apologise for my head being visible. I am um, still changing up the way I do filming to, in order to try and get the best possible shot of my work. Um, yeah, so I've currently got the camera rigged to my um, well, one of my overhead lights, <laughs> literally via duct tape, so yeah, you'll see me change things up a little bit as this video progresses, but I think I've finally nailed, uh, nailed down an optimal way of um, getting footage, so we'll see how it goes. This also pretty much sets up how I do um, all batch base armies. I rarely use um, a single skin tone for the entire force, so I just roughly split the model amongst all the skin tone the models amongst all of the skin tones I intend to use, and then um, yeah, group them with the color nearby so I know what needs to go on what. So, we're going to start laying in the shades. I'll be using the, well, obviously each triad comes with a shade colour, so for the corresponding colour I'll be using the appropriate one. And for some reason I wasn't using my wet palette there, and it looks like I should be thinning my paint a lot more, so this is very much a case of do as I say, not as I do. Um, so yeah, ideally you want to put down um, your shadows in two to three very thin layers and you want to get as much brush control as you can get here in order to avoid, um, well, overshading and getting the shade where it doesn't belong. What I'm aiming to do here is continually apply thin layers of the shade colour until I'm satisfied that um, I've achieved a suitable level of definition for the face. I would also like to stress that while I initially started this um, project with all the best intentions of creating a very very high standard paint job I quickly lost patience with that partially due to some of the um, well the, the minis are very tread in their sculpting so not particularly um, good looking to begin with and I really would like to have a game of Frostgrave at some point so I kind of put an emphasis on speed rather than quality um, in a lot of ways um, but in many respects I tripped over myself on that as we'll um, see once we get up to doing the um, all of the clothing so yeah 
speaking of which, um, I decided to skip past doing most of the skin due to, well, being, you guys being treated to lots of gratuitous shots of my overgrown hair, so yeah, let's um, forget that ever happened and move past it, shall we? Good. So, moving on to the clothing, here I'm laying down the base coats. Um, the palette I'm using, which I'll put down in the comments, is fairly large, um, but mostly consists of browns, reds, and whites. I'm also putting down the colours fairly eclectically um, across all the models to represent the fact that these guys are ultimately a ragtag group of mercenaries rather than a disciplined military force. As awesome as it is to do irregular style um, units with varying uniforms and kits, um, I would caution doing it if you're like pressed for time because it takes time to accomplish um, properly. Basically for every colour you, that you have in your palette, um, you need to do your shades, highlight, shades and highlights for that. And that all takes time and it adds up for every different colour. So uh, be warned. So just like the skin tone, the colours we are using um, this time are all my old Vallejo stuff. Um, and fairly thinned out so they take about two to three coats depending on the color to um, get an even coverage the worst one out of, out of the lot was definitely stone gray which took four to five but then again that's mostly due to it being a fit or a white therefore fairly light and my stupid hair is in the way again <sighs> Invariably, most of the time in this project went into putting on the base coats as well. As I mentioned, there were a lot of them and they take the most overall coats to get down. I find once you get the, the base coats down, um, the other stages such as shading and highlighting tend to take far, far less time as all you're really doing is tinting the pre-existing colour. So, we're in the process of finishing up all of the larger surface areas, such as the broad areas of clothing, leather and so forth, and soon, well actually right now, we'll begin honing down on some of the smaller details. So at this point I'm going to start picking out a few of the details in different colours, mostly to unify them with the, um, what is it, the apprentice and wizard that I've already painted up for this force. Um, so I'll be adding in some blue and red to, to make them complement um, my uh, key characters. So yeah, I'm initially getting, well, we'll be getting down a base coat of uh, Prussian blue for the blue, and I'll also be doing a red base coat on some items using con uh, Vallejo, uh, just conventional red. Now they're both fairly dark colors, but over black they're going to take many, 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 many layers in order to um, get an, an established um, base coat, so this is going to take some time. So moving on to the red now, um, just like the uh, blue, it's going to take many coats to get an even coverage um, happening.
So to finish up, we'll start covering a lot of the um, smaller surface area details, such as the hoods, boots, and um, other smaller things with other colors to represent, um, like leather of various sorts. And we are coming towards the tail end of getting the base coats down for everything. After this, it's just further um, reinforcing the base coats where applicable, and then we can move on to the, um, the wash stage. So, in order to lay down the wash, we're going to just do a, a straight all-over wash, but being careful to leave well alone the faces, as we've already achieved our shading and highlighting there by hand. So, be careful when you, well, faces and hair. So, because you obviously don't want to ruin the work that you've already that we've already done in terms of shading and highlighting. The Vallejo washers is their product I've had a bit of trouble with. Um, they, weirdly enough, I think the GW product is better, and I'll probably be using it more rather than the Vallejo stuff. Um, it tends to go on very patchy and has a hard time um, pooling properly in all the recesses. Um, initially, I uh, just used the wash un, um, undiluted. But in subsequent applications, I put it down with so, with some what is it called? The um, yeah, the Vallejo gl uh, glaze medium mixed in. That helped a great deal when it came to giving the wash a little bit more flow and ensuring that it found the recesses and didn't stick to all of the um, broad flat surfaces. So yeah, in retrospect, this is a product I'd probably use a lot more in a more controlled fashion rather than just doing an all-over wash. I find they're particularly good for glazing or tinting a color. That's what I did on the hair of The Apprentice and I've been doing it a lot more on the hair of other minis to get, say, to tint a blonde to a more brownish color. Okay, so the wash is dry and we're on to the, to the layering stage. So at this point, what we're trying to do is re-establish our base coat by repeatedly going over the areas we've washed, um, restoring the base coat to the intermediate areas while, and, or, and highlight areas while leaving the, um, the wash where it's pulled or um, in the recesses. Now this is a very time consuming step and paint control here is very much essential. In the, you'll notice that I'm feathering the paint down um, towards the edges of the cloth where all the light would be catching. You saw me doing it um, up on the um, face wrap near the guy's, um, I don't know, I guess scarf or whatever it is um, so yeah ideally we want to leave the wash in areas which is where in areas which are shadowed by other items of clothing so yeah you can see me doing this of course um, doing it once initially comes out as <coughs> patchy so it requires a couple of coats in order to get a um, smooth layer happening the kinds of brush strokes I tend to use for this are very small, um, flicky type ones, using only the tip of the brush. Well, flicky is not really appropriate. It's like very small, very finite ap um, applications that immediately lifting up. You want to build up the colour with lots of little strokes, rather than one large one. This will allow you to maintain the mo um, best possible control over your paint um, throughout the entire process. Uh, 
you saw me get out a small red um, handle brush there with the handle cut off. That's my cleaning up brush. It's what I use when I, well, make a mistake, want to remove some paint. So just dip it in water before the paint fully cures, scrub it away, and then you can proceed like nothing has happened. any consolation I am indeed recording this from the future and I have got a haircut so future videos will be less of my annoying red locks getting in the way okay this part I find particularly interesting because I am um, attempting to highlight a broad flat surface in this case the um, the top of this archer's hood. So to do this I used the base color thinned down with glaze medium and I'm dragging the color up from the sh shadows towards the very high highlights. And I'll be doing this repeatedly as the um, color dries. We gradually want to build up the color towards concentrating on the very top of the hood. So the initial coat only covers most of the area the next one will go about halfway or something similar and so on and so forth now this is really good for achieving a good looking well a, a realistic effect on um, your miniatures you'll also notice that I occasionally do this on some of the shoulder um, shoulder pads and shoulders like for example with this guy he has his uh, bow arm outstretched I also dragged a small highlight um, towards the most um, upmost area of his arm where the most light would hit. So what I'm doing here is I'm over overbrushing the fur boots in order to bring out and bring back the shape uh, no not the shade the mid-tone um, I do this because picking out the individual strands with my Windsor and Newton for one I was getting time consuming and there's a lot of these guys to go through and two uh, I found it a lot more precise as I at the time I was using my Windsor and Newtons to put lo lots of layers of rather thin and watery paint down so attempting to instantly switch to doing that was I found was flooding the model so instead I opted to use some more tacky paint um, not f only slightly thinned in order to um, achieve this overbrushing effect Alright, um, this is another example of using the glaze medium to put down some highlight, well, some base colors and highlights. Um, so once again, this paint is the base color, but very, 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 very thin. As you can see, it's not um, completely opaque on its first pass. Um, yeah, and we're going to gradually build this up until we're happy with the color. You'll notice that I'm uh, redoing the um, layers of paint slash glaze pretty fast. Um, yeah, this is an interesting quirk of the weather at the time, as in it was pretty hot in Canberra, so the paint was drying pretty quickly. One of the few advantages of such awful weather. So yeah, I do recall I mentioned that re reapplying the layers takes a lot of time, so for your viewing enjoyment, I've sped up the entirety of the process to 20 times the normal rate. Enjoy.
I hope this illustrates the point that there are no real shortcuts when it comes to miniature painting. Every colour you have on the model is a colour that needs a highlight and a shade, so yeah, the only real way to reduce time that I personally find is to minimise the amount of colours that you're working with. So in this case, Space Marines are probably one of the fastest armies to paint. It's like one colour and that's it. Maybe some detail if you're feeling like up to it. So the most time consuming definitely have to be doing irregular forces as I learned with my Chaos Cultists and now these guys. In terms of a longer paint job, anything with camouflage on it, which is going to be interesting because I've got some Team Yankee coming up and some other assorted irregulars. So that'll be a um, learning experience for me. Actually, I'm going to be doing some camo cloaks on some scouts soon, so I might even do a video specifically on that to see how I go. Okay, so now that all the layering is done, on to highlighting. So, um, for doing the large broad flat areas, I've got the highlight colour which is ivory mixed in with some glaze medium, and I'm dragging it from the top of the cloth up to the, um, sorry, reverse that, from the bottom of the cloth to the top, and letting it sort of coffee stain towards the top, and I'm gradually gonna, I'm, well, I'm gonna let this dry then come back to it. Um, for highlighting the cowl, I'm as highlighting as you normally would a thing. Um, just this time using the color without any glaze medium just to get a more sharper highlight as you tend to get on folds and things like that. Folds and edges, yeah. So I'm continuing to build up my highlights as I go. Um, it's a bit of a time-consuming step, but the end res and it doesn't even look that good on the first pass. But once it dries and once the rest of the model is complete, apologies for going off camera. Um, it ends up looking quite good. Also, I noticed that you we haven't seen my hair for a while, which is a good thing. Once again, many apologies over that little. Um, planning nightmare. Now this effect is especially pronounced on the sack here. We're going to gradually build up our highlight on the very very top and once it dries there will be a very very visible and definitely good looking color transition. Also just doing a little bit more highlighting on the um, fur boots just with some basic dry brushing. Nothing fancy. So yeah, um, for the sack it'll take like two to three and we're really getting that um, colour transition happening. Off camera, I do apologise. I'm also using edge highlighting generally anywhere where I feel is appropriate. I will say though, edge height lighting is generally better on things with sharp folds like armor and like solid metal objects are the obvious choice. Less good on things like clothing which require a lot more of a gradual transition in order to get a highlight happening.
one thing I did with this when making this video uh, is experiment a bit with how I um, use the camera. Um, you'll notice that I've instead of painting on my cutting mat, which you shouldn't do, um, always put down paper, so do as I say, not as I do, as usual. Um, I actually have put down a bit of uh, grey paper with a blue circle in the middle, so I figured the blue circle would be a good um, reference for keeping my um, subject within frame. Hair again, sorry. Anyway, um, so yeah, if you're looking to do your own videos um yeah i definitely recommend doing it this way as it can be a pain to ensure that what you you've got your subject in frame the entire time i really needed a haircut So, moving on to the metallics, I'm putting down a base coat of, I really wish I would keep them within the frame, yep that's better, um, yeah I'm laying down a base coat with a Vallejo a Model Air Gun Metal, or Gun Grey as it's actually called, um, so yeah, about two coats should do it, and then um, yeah, it's on to the um, wash stage of um, the metallics. So I'll be up front about this. The shields I had a lot of trouble with and in retrospect I didn't do them very well at all. So if I ever do some medieval type stuff again or more Frostgrave guys, shields are definitely on the list of things I need to practice. I tried to use um, various layers of glazes to build up a um, transition from light to dark but that didn't really look particularly great in my opinion so yeah I ended up trying to change it up a bit after that. On the blue shield I was attempting to do some scratches, but that in, ended up not turning out so great, so I might even redo the shield completely at some point, but currently the project is done, I'm just glad it's over. Uh, for the other guy, I just painted a generic geometric pattern with German grey, gradually building it up. And I think this turned out a hell of a lot better. This is also the part where I demonstrate that I have precisely no artistic talent as I can't even draw a straight line. Hooray for me. So the idea with this was that I would put down a very thin line of the highlight colour to act as the, I don't know, edge of the highlight and then I would gradually put down some more woody colours to try and create a, like the impression of a cut in the wood but it didn't look right so I basically ended up glazing over it and that made it less stark and okay, so I just went with it as is. But as I said, I didn't like it, still don't like it, I'll probably I'll, I'll try painting a simple design on it at a later date, should I feel the need to do more. I'll stop talking now. So we're in the home stretch now, um, at this point I'm starting to work on the bases, so I'm just putting down a base coat of sky grey I believe on the snow in theory did I get up and wander away for a moment yeah probably I 
I'm using a much larger brush to get that initial coat then I am going back in with a smaller brush to get closer to the feet. Um, so yeah, at this point I wanted to exercise a little more care than I normally would, especially with all the work I've been um, putting in. So yeah, at this point I was experimenting with some OSL, which in the instance of the lantern guy was only partially successful, but in the case of the guy with the torch, much more successful. Oh yeah, another thing I did was I put a layer of army painter blue ink over the sky grey on the base. So hopefully give the ground a little more of a um, cool tone to it once I go back over it with white. Anyway. So I'm initially base coating the areas which are going to be, well, emitting light with a white. And the idea is that I'd be glazing um, our, our like warmish yellows, oranges and reds over them to gradually build up a, um, well, basically a sense of things being somewhat on fire. So that's me redoing the entire thing after my um, initial failure with the Reaper paint. So th this is just glazing some, I believe it's transparent orange over the entire thing. And now I'm trying to get a bit of like color buildup on the areas where the light would be hitting. So in this case, it'll be about half his face where his arm isn't obscuring it, um, his sleeves, shoulders, and some of his chest. So it's quite subtle and probably not realistic but I was happy with it. Now this guy I didn't fully record but he did turn out much better especially as I was using layers of glazing to build up the flame effect on the torch. Um, you'll get to see the end result in the final review. So yeah, um, I'm quite happy with the way that um, torch turned out. Anyway, um, so we're going to clean up the metal. I must have already put a dry brush of, I believe it's the Vallejo uh, Game Wash, whatever it is, black shade um, down first. Now I'm bringing some of the colour back with a dry brush of initially gun. Uh, gun grey, sorry. And then I'm going to put down another dry brush of... Um, I believe it's steel over some of the more broken up um, pieces of metal such as, I don't know, rivets, things like that. Like the hilt of that guy's sword, that's a good example. So 
well and truly on the home stretch now. I'm going to dry brush some, I believe it's off-white, over the um, over the shaded base to restore some of that um, snowy kind of texture that we're after. So I'm going to, well I started with a big dry brush but I eventually went back to a smaller one just to get in at the feet. And it doesn't matter too much if I get a little bit on the feet as it'll partially be it'll be partially obscured in the final-ish step anyway. And to finish off, we will put down a layer of black around the rim of the base to clean up our dry brushing mess and move on to the final basing. So, to finish off, we've got some snow flock from GW, some PVA glue, put a slightly thinned down layer of the glue on the base. Uh, run it through your flock, tap it off, and you're, you are done. You have yourself a completed Frostgrave soldier. So, and so we are done. All ready to explore the ruins of Frostgrave and hopefully not die a hideous death at the hands of some other wizard. Overall, I think the end result was pretty mediocre overall. Tabletop standard, probably, but yeah, I can definitely do way better than this if I chose to put more time and effort into this, but this it was a long project and I kind of want to move on to other things at this point. In terms of high points, I'm definitely happy with the way the um, the fire effect on the torch guy um, turned out. Um, I'll definitely be doing more of that in future. Um, low point, well, that guy's blue shield. I'll probably be repainting that with an actual design or something at a later date. In terms of model quality, these guys are a bit ho-hum, I think. They're very much, some of the proportions are weird and um, some aspects of the kit, in my opinion, don't particularly look right together, like the way some of their cowls and stuff are sculpted. They could probably benefit from a little bit more like um, sanding and reshaping in order to make the um, arms and the bodies fit a little bit more seamlessly together. I was also thinking about adding in some rust effects for the um, helmets and armor where appropriate, but in the end I didn't really feel like spending extra time, so yeah, I'm lazy. And getting the video recorded is quite a big chunk out of my painting time, it's something else that has to be accounted for. So that's it, another fairly large project crossed off the list, um, first one for 2016 as well. Hopefully many more. Coming up, I've got some Dark Angels for a slow grow and some uh, finishing off some stuff that I did for a painting class. So we'll see if video happens or not. Catch you all later. Thanks for watching.